here we are today. It is uh, August 31st, 2022. And uh, we're here to discuss um, the, uh, let me see. <laughs> we're here to discuss about uh, mediumship and the uh, dark spirits and attachments to people. And uh, should our church be involved in that? Uh, at this level of spirituality and uh, is it okay to use uh, other mediums that are not within the divine love and those would mean other mediums that uh, believe in reincarnation which we have uh, I'm sure there's people within our church that's I hate for that um, but I've brought up some uh, webs some pages that I've read um, and I've been doing a lot of reading when I have time. But um, anyway, I think we should start off with a prayer. So um, I'll go ahead and start this off. <sighs> Heavenly Father, our creator, full of divine love for all of your children. <laughs> we ask you to help us learn about attachments to people, how we can help as a church, how we function within this as a church, and how we can lean on your angels to help us, and so many other questions. But we thank you for being here with us in this meeting. We thank you, Jesus, for being here and the angels that you sit here to for this that you give us wisdom truth and discernment in leading us through our needs to help people who are attached by dark spirits and especially also the transition of spirits that tend to die quickly there's a lot going on here heavenly father and i know that uh elaine this is the first time we spoke with her heavenly father uh, that I've spoke with her about this and uh, our backgrounds. And may you continue to lead this uh, mean through us. And in Christ, I pray for this. Amen. Okay, here we are. Okay. Uh, it's a little bit of delay on my end. <laughs> but um, I can't use my computer. I tried. And it's just it's really bad with Zoom in this steel building that I'm at. That's a warehouse. So moving forward, um, I sent some uh, messages uh, about uh, attachments and dark spirits. And the one that I really like is the Josephus one. Uh, and I think everybody should have been able to read that by now. And if not, uh, we'll go through that. Um, I think what was, you know, when I was told to reach back out to the church, um, I had no idea, Al and you and Gene, what you know, who you were at all. Um, I knew who Jeff was. I'd been in contact with him through his website. Um, and then finally I said, Jeff, it's uh, I'm being led to come back to the church. Who do I talk to? And he led me here. Prior to that, I was uh, a lone wolf. I was out there stealing uh, the tag name for Louie. I was the lone wolf out there uh, in Jean, the first meeting at the prayer meeting. She introduced me as a, uh, what was it, a evangelist. <laughs> and, uh, that's, I love it. Thank you, Jean. Um, but basically, that's what I've been doing since the time when uh, I, the divine spirit came into my soul and showed me how to read the Bible. Uh, it was just uh, from there, I'm gone, and I used to always just lay hands on people. In the time of my Christian, we laid hands on people, Christianity, mm -hmm. um, something I was raised with doing. Um, later, about 13 years ago, I ran into this hypnotist, the therapist, and right away, I started talking to him about attachments, and he just lit up, and uh, they had been doing these attachment removals, and they've been doing um, helping people transition since the Twin Towers. Um, his sister is a convoyant that talks to animals. And they worked on Hollywood ranches and stuff like that, helping animals and understand what's wrong with these animals. 
and she could talk to them and they talked back to her. And uh, uh, we, uh, while she was in her hypnotizing, she was, you know, talking to the spirits and the spirit came to her and says, I've been sent to you. Um, Jesus has sent me. And this was a young man that was in the Twin Towers when it fell. And he was there to rob it, to rob a business, him and his friends. And on the way down the stairs after the first plane hit, uh, he found an old man and he was helping the old man out of the building and he made it. He rushed back in to help more people and he died in the building crash. Um, he, Jesus came to him. He goes, I know who you are. I know your background, but because you risked your life to help others and you help that man, you're going to work for me. Basically, that's what it was. And he told him, go to the spirit work with her and tell her that we need to transition the souls that died in the twin towers. And, uh, they ended up that changed my friend's life forever, his sister's life forever. And basically they very rarely do animal, uh, communication, but they still do And more or less it's transitioning is the big thing. Uh, they just completed all the killing fields in Cambodia, all the millions of people there. They transitioned them to release them from that uh, sudden death shock where they were still hovering on the earth plane. And they released them to the plane that they're going, supposed to be going to. Um, they've done so much more. Um, so that's my background with them. And I probably have helped uh, family members, good friends. Uh, people who I just talk to and they need help. They want to know if they're attached. Um, and I, I will tell them where they're attached through my friends. They asked their medium and, and she asked the spirit. And basically that's the simplicity of it all. Um, he has a book. Uh, he has his website, even though he can't keep up with everything that's going on his website. Uh, he's a very busy man, him and his sister. And I trust them because I've had nothing but positive uh, outcomings from people that they've helped, including my own son and a young man uh, recently. And uh, now my niece, who is the darkest soul uh, probably in the family, has reached out to me. And I'm trusting him and they're going to uh, look inside of her today. We're going to try to remove the dark spirits from her today. That's going on Wednesday. So it's a busy day. So that's my background. Um, Elaine, can you share yours, please? Hey, guys. <clears throat> my name is Elaine. Um, I actually stumbled across spirit releasement accidentally when I was doing um, basically helping people transform their limiting beliefs. It started about, I'd say, three, three four before COVID. So um for four years ago or so um so basically clients would all of a sudden be manifesting different things that were not that person basically and and so and i took it upon myself to also start reading a lot of books about spirit releasement and also i uh took up a course by amy major who is known in the u.s and she's a medium and she could see she could hear them she I took a course with her on spirit releasement and it was amazing so basically she taught me a lot of stuff too because I was getting clients who we couldn't get rid of the stuff no matter what we did and it turns out there are different types of entities not just earthbound so you're not dealing with just one thing there are many different types and there are different different ways to deal with them because some of them don't don't um conform to our rules let's put it that way so i don't care how much love you want to give them and tell them to go and claim your space it doesn't work because it's like that's not my rules right so i've learned um i i could sense the different types of entities i so then i use the different techniques but it's very important to mention ron that i don't just do spirit releasement it is there's a hook in point and a rapport as to why people have have them in the first place the law of attraction as you know right so Clearing is one thing, but uh, there's a good chance they'll come back unless you you change that hook in point. I was telling to Gene and Al, it's almost like a socket on the outlet of your wall, you know, the plug, right? Unless you change that plug or get rid of it, the other one's going to be plugging in. Um, so I do, I it's very important that if I take on a client, I don't just help them clear off their stuff. It's, it is like 
what's the point? I'm going to clear off and have more stuff come in. So unless you are really <laughs> choosing to do the work, and I tell them there'll be a lot of crying and it's not easy, but I guarantee you at the end of it, you know, there's going to be light at the end of the tunnel, but are you committed? Because they have to make that choice. And so that's when I, when, when people come, they go, okay, I've tried everything known to man. They've tried everything, medication, you know, every kind of therapy, nothing works. And that's when the clients come to see me. I tend to get people who are either very strong CEO type who have never felt their soul, who, you know, like very successful kind of people, but they realize their lives, you know, not gonna, not gonna, they don't want their life to be the way it is. And they realize that, you know, they're willing at this point in their life in their 50s, 60s, 70s, whatever it is to move on. So those type of clients, or I get clients who are suicidal at the last, I'm talking about, I'm going to off myself now kind of thing. And, and I'm like the last resort, people refer me to them. And then um, um, those, those thought forms, they, a lot of them hear voices in their heads. Um, so there's a lot of education as well, not just for the person who's who's um, hearing the voices, but also educational on the spirit side, like on the on the other side, whatever is attached to them, if it's an earthbound, you know, that they're influencing that person causing harm and they're also degrading self therapy as well. So a uh, combination of therapy with the entities, depending on what it is um, and, the, and the method of, of dealing with them as well. Once again, very important that you got to make that choice to are you going to change because I had a client 76 here heard voices for this is a new one uh, three weeks ago two weeks ago nobody knew what to do last resort kind of thing um, he was last thing they're saying to him now is kill himself so then the sister was like oh my god what am I going to do so they referred me to him and we did a, a, a whatsapp thing and and we got rid of them different types but then the problem was I gave him like, you know, Al, I just want you guys to know, like I go, okay, your homework is go to like soultruth.ca and go to the Divine Love website, start reading. I always say, right? Because there's so much to information. I just say, start reading and they'll give you tools and stuff to start your healing process because there was like so much baggage, so much stuff. You don't even know where to start with this 76 year old man, right? Um, and, uh, and I said, and, and the sister, and I said, listen, there's a hook in point. There's a rapport. What was, and the sister in the background goes, he's lonely. Very interesting. So, you know, his soul, he was calling out and the, these things came back, but he was so animated and so excited to tell me about the entities. Like, oh my God, they were like awful, but he was like, so into the story. You know what I mean? Even after I got rid of them, he was still in replaying that story. So it's like, it's like, there was a, it gave him something. You get what I'm saying? When people, they gave them a story. And then he's like, yeah, but I told him to sleep in the guest room. But he just, this, this entity just insists on sleeping under my bed. And I just told him, and I told him to go away. I said, yeah, but you told him to sleep in the guest room. That's through your house. You still, <laughs> and he didn't quite get that. It was like, it's still your house. You're still right? inviting him in. <laughs> <laughs> right? You can move to next door. So, so then I checked in. Um, sure enough, a week later, different ones came back in. Um, and I talked to the sister and she, I go, yeah, until we fix that hook in point. And then she goes, I know he's so stubborn, you know, like, but there is a rapport. There's like, he, even though he says he doesn't want them, but it gives him company. Do you understand what I'm saying? There are lots of people like that. Lots of people, they, they will shit all over you, Ron, excuse me, but, but saying like, oh my God, it didn't work. They all came back, but, but there was something that, they really didn't really want to get rid of. Um, for example, let's split this. There's, I'll give you a very different example. Someone who came to me a long time ago wanted to weight loss, okay? And then we did this thing called VAC. This is a different modality, did a VAC. And then, but one of the questions she asked is, is there any kind of negative consequence if you lost your weight? And it came out as, if I lost my weight, um, I would be like vulnerable to like rape, whatever. Something happened when they were, they were raped. So then they, they started eating to protect themselves. So th that was a belief that had to be dealt with, a trauma that had to be dealt with before the weight loss could happen. So similarly, when you do spirit releasement stuff, it's not just spirit, it's entities, whatever maybe, or it could be just residual thought forms. That's also, you know, uh, many things out there. Um, um, we have to take a look at how we're going to do it and how we're going to, prevent them from coming back. Otherwise, I just think it's just a waste of our time to do it. <laughs> Isn't there a broad, like everything in life, range of types of entities? I mean, 
Elaine, when you were here, you gave examples about ones that, you know, were just around mm -hmm. and um, uh, that was easy to mm -hmm. let them go. And uh, probably, uh, anyway, but what about those at the other end of the continuum, these dark, mm -hmm. uh, evil entities that want to put out the light? Yeah. And they'll attack our loved ones. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you can comment about that. Well, they're one of the different entities. Ones you can, I always like to do like the ones if they're attacking, attacking someone, you know, there once again has to be a law of attraction. You know, you could send like, let's say if someone did voodoo stuff on me and try to come into me or you guys, for example, who are quite bright, it'd be pretty hard to have anything attached. I mean, like they just don't like that vibration. Let's let's go really simple stuff, right? If it is able to someone sends a curse and I've I've seen that before where they send a thought for a curse to someone. There is some they're not that bright. They're not aware education once again. And 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 yeah, they could be influenced for sure, you know, because of some stupid thing. But there are. It's almost like they need to be aware. I have my niece, she lucid dreams all the time and she brings back stuff all the time. And she's just in a state she's got, she's not, she's not well, let's put it that way. And I, and she's 18 and I try to tell her, listen, you got it. You, you, you gotta be careful. You bring stuff back and she's, and I go, you know, you gotta clear up. Even if you clear off your space, that's the problem. It's not as simple as that. I've had people, okay, go clear off your space. But it's like, if you don't know what you're doing either, it doesn't quite work too. Remember how in the, in Jesus, he's, he says it perfectly. Conditions, intention, and free will, right? Like you, got, you can't just say, I clear my space, like that empty word. It's kind of thing. It literally is like a practice of like your intention and it's like your will, that kind of thing. Like there's like a method to the madness, right? It's not, you can't just do empty words. And I think... That's why so many people, it doesn't work for them to just clear stuff off um, and stuff come back. Their, their, their intention's not really strong if they really want. So it really sums it up to that. I think it's simple. It's quite simple. Is yeah, I, I feel for those people that are sensitive and ignorant at the same time. I mean, yes. they're just sitting ducks for all of this stuff. They yeah. have no clue what's going on. And I know when in my... Uh, early years uh, spiritually i had the most bizarre dreams and they mo most of them were not very pleasant you know because i was a target you know i was opening up and i didn't know how to deal with it so you know as you mature then well at least at least as i matured i was more cognizant of how to deal with it and, and of course the divine love will create a light around you eventually but you know, a lot of people don't have time for that. They want it now. You know, yeah, they I, want the, the instant fix. When I was in my 20s living alone in an apartment, an entity was, I woke up and he was uh, trying to rape me. And uh, so there's so many people that are targets. So I'm thinking, um, just brainstorming here, but if we were to offer um, a presentation or even make a video um, demystifying spirit attachments and how to handle them, what to do. Elaine, I feel badly because I was going to go and look at your website with more focus and more time. So if you've done this already, um, to just... What do you guys think about something like that? What do we say publicly to the movement? I, I think, first of all, it's awareness as as anything. It's like, the, you know, the 12-step program, by the way, Al, you're right. Uh, most people, actually, most people have, who are in recovery or had some addiction are em empaths. They're very sensitive energy. That's why they, the drugs and alcohol helps, whatnot. Um, <clears throat> education is like step one. It's like awareness. Oh, my God, this stuff is out there. I think it's step one. Um, Step two is informing them that they must make a choice. You know what I mean? Like, I, once again, I, I'm telling you, yeah, it's so cool. It's like UFO stuff and alien stuff. This, I think, can almost be categorized into that. It's like a cool topic and people are like really, you know, interested in it. But if they really want a different life, <clears throat> they have to step up. I, I think it's, I think that's the stress point. 
you gotta it's not really the spirit release and that's just like we can get rid of stuff on the side that's pretty like you know i can we can clear that off but it's like dealing with your stuff so that they don't come back anymore yeah so okay. it's, it's yeah. less entertaining that's how i do sorry Ron. yeah uh, that's how I, that's okay that that's exactly what i do because i have my friends you know this was I don't think they were very spiritually Jesus type led prior to that. Uh, his name is Lane, the spirit that came to them. And, uh, and that's why, you know, they're still into their uh, reincarnation stuff and uh, past lives and stuff like that. See, I, I, I look through that a little bit because even Jesus uh, in his uh, Al that you, you uh, did in volume two, uh, where he, he addresses the false doctrine of reincarnation. And he, he says, for is, for is not the purpose of life, no matter what perspective and philosophy is taken to gain in spirituality and life and progression, and that the moment of now is more important than the idea of why and how one came to this moment. Rather, I urge all to seize the day. Whatever form and way and journey that, that they are upon, good, that they will progress statement. further along their path of love. And love. Yeah, that, that, I was, like that. that one there I, I found. I wish I had um, said it. Yeah, I listen. I listen to. Uh, you know what, I, Al? I got to tell you, you know, I wish you were on our side to listen to you when you're doing this, because I know that you're probably are not aware of exactly what you're saying or if you have if you have no. any memory of that at all so you have well, to go back and read it and or it, listen like, you know, to like it a, when uh you know it's like a Jesus river of thought stuff. you know it just it just flows so. but, no but, if i start but you know this or true attaching, then it interrupts it so yeah i know you're getting yeah, a delay, it's, so it's, it's just, hard uh, to cause... communicate here <laughs> I, okay if, okay but, yeah the, you know, it, the, the truth, especially his last message. But uh, let me let me move on real quick. Yeah. Different types. Of, um, so the first time I went to test my friend, I tested him on myself. And uh, there was a young man that was committing suicide by alcohol as much as he could drink every day. And they found him down on the boardwalk down by the beach. And uh, they uh, did a removal on him, and uh, he found out that he was, uh, he, he himself was a spiritualist, a lot of times that happens. And he was the young man sitting there that they put under, his sister was there. So he hypnotized him, then he put me in a relaxed state, and, you know, then whatever, he, uh, all of a sudden, he, the first thing he tells me is, I got a broken toe. It's on a Sunday. I broke my toe on Friday. Nobody knew I had a broken toe. So right there, I'm thinking, well, they're scanning my body for illness, right? And then uh, they told me that I just had a small attachment that's been there for a long time, and it's not doing any harm. And they asked me, would you like to remove that? I said, yes. I took a girl out in the lobby. Young girl, I want to say she's probably 12. She had bite marks on her arm. She had bruises. Her whole family was there to assist her. And I hung around and uh, they had a hard time. They removed the spirits from her um, there while I was in the other room. And then they actually had to go to their house later that day because the entity uh, was one that was of evil. It wasn't one that had a soul, they told me. And uh, I had never heard of that before. But if you give me a minute here, I'm going to read you what Jeff Keller. Now, you got to understand I was friends with Jeff probably a good two years before I met you and uh, Al and Gene. So this is where he, he says, he says, my feeling is that while being strong in the love is certainly a help, nevertheless, an attachment can occur. And indeed, I had one for the first 10 years of my journey with divine love. We're running out of time here. So if attached in Africa, he goes, it attached me in Africa many years prior. And all the time I was with divine love mediums and sensitives, no one saw it. A friend of mine did and removed it. I also removed one that was deeply embedded in another 
divine love person by having 10 of us do a hug ball. But, but while we moved it, it simply looked for another victim. Fortunately, that was me because I instantly knew what to do. He says, my advice to recognize this as a fact, but not to participate unless guided to do so. In the case of the hug ball, I was almost forced by spiritism to do what I did. Some of these entities are extremely dangerous and only the most highly skilled can do this work. And also, if you were to read the book that I sent you, uh, and you just skipped it right there where she's doing uh, removals, she actually removes one, that lady, and she's a reincarnationist, but she actually removes one that has no soul. And usually those are beings uh, and that are here. They live among us. <laughs> and uh, those are the ones we have to protect ourselves from. And I find those in some of the people that uh, I help. And boy, oh boy, and they fight. Uh, it's yes. not fun for my friend and his sister. It takes a lot of energy out of them. And anyway, yes, God bless you I've all. Thank you so that. much. Yeah. I, I don't know if I have any, I, I deal with, there's multidimensionals, there's lower consciousness, earthbounds, aliens, and demons, and thought forms. I've dealt with all of them, and I've never had a problem getting rid of any of them. There's no medium, no hypnosis. I don't need to know their story when they need to, when they came in. The point is, there's a way to do it, and then they just, and then it's gone. Um, and then, then I can go into the session with them on just their own stuff. But a lot of times the, the, the person who's the client, even though if they can't see, they can't hear whatever, they always feel it moving. They feel it like a heaviness. They got, I had a client yesterday. It's very funny, Ron. You, you know what? I did a really surfacey kind of scan of him at the very beginning, and I got rid of a couple of things. But then as we got deep into his stuff, there were two more that I was discovered. They were they were hiding quite deeply, but what we were doing, it kind of it 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 popped them out. Basically, I, I should really you know I always know when it's something when it moves around really fast kind of thing. And then the so that was that was an earthbound and 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 then it was a one of them was a demon. It was a very low. He could feel it in his arm. It was a very even cause. He goes, it's like I feel really heavy in my arm and it feels like and and so there's a another method to get rid of them and it was gone. But the point is, I've never. I have an experience where I was not able to get rid of different types of stuff. Yeah, some of them know so for sure because they're not from this dimension. So there are different ways to do it if you know how to do it. It's not, they, they do not answer to love. They do not answer to like, you can divine love it all you want. Mm. And I've had it. I had a friend come over to the lake the other day. She brought me a nice earthbound, came into me. Guys, three <laughs> Three in the morning, my elbow, remember I told you my arthritis taught me like it flares up like I know and stuff. Three in the morning, my left elbow swelled, swelled up. And I was like, no way. And I had to do a check-in and it wasn't earthbound. And it and I cleared it off and then within 12 hours, my elbow is fine. Like, you, you know, like for me, if it comes in, and I was so surprised because I'm always praying out and Jane, you guys should be proud of me, you know, like, and for it to come in was like, you know, you think that, how can you? <laughs> it do. It's like like what you said, Ron. It doesn't matter how much stuff you divine love, whatever. If you have a, if there's a report, because we're still human. You guys have to remember, we're still here. We're still not perfect. So there's still going to have the ability for things to potentially hook in for sure. So how do you get rid of them? You're such a strong-willed, vibrant person. That I could just imagine on some psychic level you're saying go and uh you got right angels <laughs> to help you and, and but yeah. then you were here you were yeah. kind of i don't know i was talking to them like, yeah going like this i don't know how do you do it okay like multi-dimensionals i'm just gonna lay it out okay so multi i work with a big team i know that i can feel them you know, and I and uh, and they are they're amazing. I um, so th regardless of that, I tr and they're doing the work. I'm purely the conduit, but I can sense you know, like multidimensionals. Those are the ones I told you from a different dimension, but they're like slug. They like to hang in the head around the head. Um, they're like slug like they're like crayfish. They're like lower snail looking kind of thing. I once thought I had I had like what do you call it? Head lice? Head lice? I swear, I had head lice, but there's nothing. It's like a creepy crawly. 
stuff like that. As a matter of fact, you, a sure sign is people start getting styes, eye twitches, shit like that. Those are multidimensionals. They come here to learn. They like to hang around here and they make you tired. So all of a sudden, if you get really tired, so those ones are pretty simple. You just basically, I can sense, you just, if you can sense that, you just sense them and go, okay, you've been found out. Time for you guys to just go. They're pretty easy. They're, they don't mean harm. They're just learning. They can go, right? Go. So those are those ones. Um, then you have lower consciousness, which comes and they like to attach or in the chest area. Those are your COVID people. Those are the people, you know, they wonder how come they got COVID and they still got like all the symptoms and stuff and they got like pins and needles and whatever, that attachment. So those ones, um, they're up to no good. They do like to cause a bit of harm. Those ones require, I open a portal down below on a side and then it's a one-way portal. I can see it and it goes out like a suction, think vacuum that way. And then you have to call their dimensional police. So I call that entities, that lower consciousness, that police and go, you stand there, right? They stand there, right? They at end of the portal. And then, and I go, okay, guys, time to, it's like being arrested. They go back into that portal and then, then you close it up, right? Then you've got earth pounds, which we all talked about. Earth pounds are um, basically, you know, they walk around in the dark and then they see someone more empathetic or someone brighter and they go, Right end. The problem with earthbounds going to your auric field is once they're in the auric field, it's almost like the plane disappears off the radar. It's like the loved ones can't see them. It's like the it's gone, but they can't get out of the auric field. Much like Thirty Years Among the Dead, Carl Wickens. I love his book. But the point is, you need a method. He uses the electricity. I use divine love, and I open a slit doorway. So you have to literally open like a doorway in someone's auric field. But before you do that, you have to talk to them. Okay, listen. You're in someone's body. You've been harming them put in your fonts and look, you haven't, I always say the very classic stuff. You haven't eaten, you haven't pissed or you haven't sh shit. You haven't seen the sunrise. Why are you hearing like all these things? So it's like, they go, Hmm. And eventually they believe me. And I go, okay, I'm going to open this door because I always give them a time limit. I always say, Hey, listen, I'm only here for a bit. So I'm going to open that door for a little bit. You got nothing to lose. Come on out. And, and then I said, and they can't, they go, they can't see. Right. So I go, just open your spiritual eyes. Just say, I can see. And it'll be slightly brighter. And then once you go out, you ask for your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your aunt, your uncle, someone who loves you. And then they'll come and you just have to sit, they would be slightly brighter and you just go and you think you don't walk to them, you think you're way there and then you go and I explain what happens in the spirit realm, right? Once you cross over, there'll be lights. Oh my God, there'll be a bed. There'll be healing. You can start asking questions, you know, people. So they tend to get convinced. So one, one goes, if they have multiples, I say, look at your friend. He just poof, disappeared. How does that work if you're alive? You know, like you just basically do that for earthbounds and then they tend to go right then you close them up obviously then the next one you got are like aliens aliens <laughs> aliens and also devices aliens i very rarely come across aliens aliens the way i see it are like future future us and they coming here to like experiment i rarely see those i don't really see them but demons i do see them not in a catholic sense of demons <laughs> these are the ones that you're talking to quite a dark entity um they do require help on, I open another portal, but this one is like into the ground and then calling their police thing and also calling, believe it or not, it seemed to work last time is uh, Archangel Michael, whatever your name is, but your team and he, comes and he does this thing and then, um, and then they're like gone. Yeah. So, and, yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, in the book that I sent you, that's what that lady uses, uh, Michael. Yeah. yeah, you know, he has many names, right? So whatever that team is, I, you know, Al, I'm like, it, names don't matter to me. It's the intention. And it's like, my intention is like th the right team is going to come and do the, the thing that they're supposed to do, right? And, uh, and, and, and then they go. And then, then, of course, once that goes, I would always fill them with, lots of love you know i i prefer divine love to you know fill the places with you know that were dark and empty now and with divine love hello we're back <laughs> we're back <Yay>. <laughs> now where Sorry. we left off some yeah. of the questions i have are about the cloak of protection praying for the cloak of protection and um also also i'm confused about um you know, people who believe in reincarnation and the um, 
the the person who's removing them are, are those all more attachments or i don't understand there being all that part i know isn't it crazy so my mentor amy she believes in reincarnation i try to explain there is no reincarnation she goes well i felt that and i've lived it much like aj in australia they really literally feel that impression is so strong um that they they're like but i lived it i say they can't be unconvinced that's how they that is that strong yeah. but we listen to what you know al you said it padgett has said it everybody has said it. it's like the impressions that they could put upon you depending on how open you are can be like emotional and it's like it happened to you like as if it was yesterday those are the words like it was yesterday yeah <laughs> and i just reading in uh have you got the judas uh, i love the Spirit judas book, book yeah and yeah. he talks about well he says these things are kind of innocuous you don't need to worry about this belief yeah. in reincarnation he said they'll figure it out eventually yeah you know don't you know don't make it a deal breaker basically it's uh, mm -hmm. yeah it is what it is people are going to believe what they believe yes you're not there to kind of remold their thinking <laughs> and mind you're there to add something right. to it, which is the truth of divine love so yeah I agree yeah because once and, they get that divine love in them um god does the work see it's, it's not yeah. by our works uh, our works are only continuing to pray for the divine love it's it's yeah. just kind of weird it's almost like the it, a new entity comes inside you which is we call god and he's full of divine love he or she and it just comes in you and it automatically starts transforming you and those drunkenness or cussing, uh, all those things you used to do, slowly do you just stop doing them because the divine love takes over. It's a transformation progress. So in any yeah. way, it's like you, like Elaine said, these people are so into it. But that volume two, message nine, and Jesus explains all that, Gene, uh, about how what my first contact was in college my roommate i was 17 my roommate hypnotized people to help change their grades from c's and d's a's and b's it, it actually worked and i would we'd have two tape recorders go into cassettes and i'd give people you know their cassette and uh we always take them into a past life and you know here i am a full-on christian sports guy and i'm just focused on jesus and um, I'm just thinking, wow, wow, wow. And then he turned me on to Edgar Casey, and, you know, Casey talks about reincarnation. I never adapted to that. But I always felt that when they were under, that there were spirits around them that were doing the talk. And it wasn't them. It wasn't a past life. And, you know, and then Jesus, when he's in the, his readings, in fact, pageant stuff uh, of the reincarnation, it just solidified my belief that this is true, you know, that I'm reading. Anyway, I would really, yeah. I would really like to uh, gather together um, those books and those messages that you've been recommending. I'd love to see them in one place and um, uh, you know, kind of a go-to place. The one place to go to place is the book by Jeff Cutler, Is Reincarnation Real? That is the only book you need to read. He is yeah. everything yeah. known to man. Every message, every book he's done yeah. it. And it's like, thank you, Jeff. And I read it. It was so entertaining. Wow. It, yeah, yeah, I have that one. I share that sure. one. <laughs> well, we've got... But he, he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's got a very uh, pen, pendant, pedantic pedant? approach where it's this, 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 and this. And people uh, get a little tired of the, you know, kind of the tone of the book, I think. But uh, I you're absolutely right. It's all in there. It's all in, he's done the research. You got to give the guy who has like done all the books, all the research. So it's like, okay, he's done it. Yeah. Yep. Well, are we at a point now in our discussion that we was... could have a little prayer and uh, yeah. uh, not to put you on the spot, dear, but. Well, you put me on the spot every day, dear. This is yeah. true. It's my, and um, my prayer on who's here, you'll say, not to put you on the spot, dear. <laughs> So, okay, if we're going for that, um, Elaine, why don't you say an opening prayer? And then if you guys mute, and uh, we'll see what comes. And there's construction going on around us. So yeah. There will be. 
some interference. I'm afraid. Yeah, I have a, I have a, I have a meeting also. Prayer circle. Oh, Karen and uh, Simon. Do you have to go now? Um, in seven minutes. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Shall we just get started? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. <sighs> We pray for God's divine love to come to our soul, to fill the very soul essence of us with God's love, with God's divine essence, so that we change from being just creation to the creator, to part of the creator. And as we go on this divine love path, may we just be able to shine our light, have these portals of lights, lattices of light, and help the celestial angels and the stellar friends come down like a fast elevator, come down from the top to the bottom and help out all the spirits and all the realms and also the people who are still physical. So I pray that right now as we pray, we're going to open up and hold the space of these lights, these portals of light strong so that Al can get an amazing channeling happening. There we go. Greetings and blessings to you, my friends. I am Soretta Kim. I've been here with your conversation and the aspects and elements of this work that you call lower entity removal. And I say to you that there are different gradients or levels of this work, some which are applied by those who are, shall we say, of a lower soul development, but can relate to the conditions and entities that they are working with. Therefore, they are quite successful in this work because of their psychic gifts, their mental bearing, and their beliefs. And you, my beloved friends, wish to exercise this work from a higher perspective, not of the soul. I merely wish to comment that as you grow within your soul, so your perceptions of these things will change because the perceptions of your soul will grow and deepen. Therefore, you will see from a different perspective what the dynamics are in these conditions and what the energies and entities are pertaining to these conditions. It is fine that you have certain constructs and beliefs and what is primarily mental perspectives on what these entities are, as you call them. Yet, in truth, they are either constructs of energy formulated by human thought and conditions, or they are actual spirits who are manifesting themselves in certain ways. Therefore, creating within the individual a perception of a creature or some form where you may believe this is their real uh, form and expression. But in reality, this is a projection of that spirit, or it is something that that spirit or some other spirit or mortal has created through their minds. And as you well know, the mind creates and will manifest things through thought. And there are many upon your earth plane who have very dark thoughts and are not aware of what they are creating through those dark thoughts. But indeed, these creations manifest as a result. And so I urge caution to anyone who 
attempts to deal with these conditions and manifestations. That indeed, it is important that you are not susceptible, nor can you take on these energies or open the door to the possibility of some attachment from a spirit. It is a very subtle and intricate work. It requires deep wisdom and deep perception. And one cannot enter into this work without being fully prepared and being fully aware of what it is that they are dealing with and the purpose of it. Dear daughter, you have a great deal of wisdom and you understand that in removing these conditions around the individual does not guarantee that they will be freed from these conditions on a permanent basis. And you well understand that free will is in play in these situations. I also wish to encourage you to continue to teach the truth of love and the power of love to heal, the power of love to insulate mortals from the dark conditions of the earth. That with love, whether that be a clear and beautiful state of natural love around the individual or that of the divine love, creating a light around the individual, there is an assurance that they will be protected. Provided their thoughts are of the highest and of higher things. And as you have mentioned, dear daughter, that we are all, you are all human. And indeed, through that condition of human nature, there are highs and lows. There are conditions that are dark and conditions that are light. And of course, the conditions that are dark may open the door for darker entities to enter and influence the individual. The antidote to this is prayer. For as you well know, within each of you, there are conditions that you would wish were not present within you. Thought conditions, biases, emotional conditions, and encrustations around the soul. All of these things have the potential of drawing in darkness, drawing in dark spirits who will readily feed upon these conditions and help reinforce them. Discipline of the mind, discipline in prayer, discipline in your intentions and your motivations all play their part in ensuring immunity from the darkness. And this is a goal that I believe each of you have, and many have who are upon this divine path. They wish for the higher road, they wish for the higher truths, and they wish to be transformed by the great gift of divine love. And so they will be granted these wishes and desires through the mechanisms that they have been taught, through the ways which God provide is, provides for each individual. But they cannot walk that road and walk the road of darkness simultaneously without paying the price. And each of you in your own way have experienced this duality and at some point in your life have walked these two roads but you transition as you grow in divine love towards the road of divine love. And so this 
is the antidote to this duality and dilemma that so many face in your world. I would say that everyone faces in your world. You must teach this truth. You must help them to understand the dualities within them. And you must help them to have great compassion for themselves and for the world and for one another. For in love, there is compassion. In love, there is forgiveness. In love, there is hope and faith towards that which is of light. So I urge you, my beloved friends, to have compassion for those who are suffering greatly by the dark conditions and forces in the world that are imposed upon them. So many are ignorant of what has been their lot and how that has happened to them. It is for you to educate, as you have well said, dear daughter. It is for all of you to educate your charges to the potentials of being influenced by dark conditions in the world and that each individual must awaken themselves to their own true condition and their own true motivations. Self-responsibility is very important and understanding of the power of free will and the understanding of the power of love is most important. How you, the individual may utilize the power of love in many different ways through many different circumstances to neutralize the negative conditions and dark conditions that may be present. There, each individual may have a toolkit of resources to deal with the darkness in the world. They may have an angel close to them. They may use prayer. They may use the understandings and knowledge that is given through many different sources. And they may, through their will and their desire, seek for the remedies that will come through prayer and through knowledge, through wisdom and through love. I thank you for listening to me and I understand you are limited in your time. I hope I have covered much in this message. And indeed, there is much to be considered regarding these issues. And I thank you, beloved souls, for taking seriously these issues, for they are indeed serious conditions in the world and require serious and powerful remedies in order to neutralize the darkness that is in this world. May God bless you, beloved souls, in his love, for the great remedy of the soul is God's love. And may you walk fully and completely upon the divine path towards all that is truth and light and love. My love is with you. My love, blessings, presence, and support are with you. I am Sereticam. I'm glad to be with you today. God bless you. God bless you all in love. Thank you. Hey, Ron, I know you have to run, and it's okay. I do. Um, Thank you, Father, for your blessings. Uh, I will be in contact. Thank you for your love, and thank you for the guidance from Serena Kim and for these opportunities to be together in the light and to further understand the journey towards truth and light and peace and love, clarity and joy. Keep us close to you, dear God, and may our soul open to a great and flowing of your love. And we love you, dear God, and we thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
Ron, if you need to leave a link and keep yeah. recording our final remarks. Sorry, I had to close that off. It's just what I do as a medium, you know. So <laughs> Some people don't get that. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Um, it's all it's new to me. Off. You know, the, so much mediumship going on in the church right now. It's, it's really awesome. It really is. Um, I love all the messages, even the small ones. You know, they all mean something. They're all meant to mean something to someone. Yeah. I, especially the small ones. I share those with, with uh, my friends. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit yeah. to dip on the message. Well, yeah. should we have well, a enjoy closing? your, your other something. meeting there, Ron. And uh, we'll let you go. Yeah, you know, I looked. I look, and I, I, I think it's at noon. I thought it was at 11, but I think it's at noon. So, uh, oh, noon. Sereticam. Is this, was it Sereticam? Yeah. Sereta. S E R E T T A. Kim. Kim, not Kim. That was, uh, Kim is, uh, Korean. Kim. Kim. K E M. Yeah, Kim. Yeah. Which means man, I think. Awesome in, message. Uh, in uh, the um, what do you call it? Language. Yeah, the language of uh, the pharaohs and whatnot. The Egyptians. Egyptians so. Yeah. It just means person. I want to stay on topic, and then we'll end the recording, and then we'll chit chat. So, um, where are we now? If you've got more time, Ron, uh, are we opening up further discussion, or is it time just to have some closing remarks? Uh, for, for me, I think just closing would be good. I mean, like, that was an amazing channel. I think she, he answered lots of stuff, which was uh, three key things, right? Divine love, love, education, and uh, and and the person's will to change their thought patterns, which is like, you know, it's changing. So three things are very important. I love how, uh, I think one of the main things I got was, uh, don't get so stuck on a story. Oh, yeah, it's a 14-year-old here, it's a blah, blah, blah. It's like, it doesn't matter because it's in our mental. Yeah construct because it could be like like you said it could be like the spirit putting it out there so we see monsters and whatever it is but it's actually not we have to proceed from our soul so so it's not really the story forget about the story but yes like it's our yes so impression don't get stuck on that uh was a key thing i got and also keep doing what we're doing the three key things i think that she he answered like what do we do at this summit thing or what we want to do teaching are the three at the end of it it should be three things people should be uh, education's awareness love and then and then uh, uh, personal growth work <laughs> yes oh i just echo emphatically everything you said all these stories just drive me crazy and so when Serena Kim said, you know, they're constructs from somebody's mind, we don't want to get drawn into that, you know? It's like a bunch of distracting noise. So I love your style, Elaine, where you just, you know, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> and um, so thank you for your mentoring. I, I really appreciate that. And Ron, I think uh, your efforts with people, how you're working to try and uplift people, I'm I'm very uh, very impressed with what what you do. I, you know, your language is a little different from ours, but that's not a big deal. Uh, you know, I'm not. I don't mention Jesus every second sentence. You know, <laughs> mine is more about the Creator, the Divine, and all of that. But that that's not a big deal for me. But uh, the fact that you know you're probably using language that are is reaching more people because you're christian you're, you're community. speaking to christian communities and whatnot where i mean if i spoke to them it would just be flat you know they wouldn't get it so yeah so anyway we all have our own way the mediumship it's uh i think it was what originally the people in the church um the New Birth Church. Uh, when I came to them, I was like, they were in awe. They actually had a lot of questions to me about 
my Christian background, but I definitely believe uh, you know our Christian church had a major revival. And, you know, I'm shaking. I, I say half an hour. I know it was longer. And, uh, you know, the spirit and all I was praying all the way on the freeway to the church, which is a half an hour drive. God, fill me for your love so I can love others like you do and teach me your, the truth. And that's all I prayed. And when I started shaking, you know, and after helping them, as soon as I touched that girl and I helped her, she fell back and then instead of letting her fall, I laid her down gently. And as I was going down, I just started this movement. And uh, I just went, got up and I just put my hands together and I started praying. So I didn't stop praying for his love and I didn't stop praying for his truth for however long it lasted until the virus, the, the wobbling started to diminish. And I didn't, you know, and I noticed I was in a different area of the room. I guess I was kind of like. Yep, there he goes. We can't hear you, Elaine, you're Elaine, muted. You're muted. We're Ron's going in and out. Anyway, I'm back. <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, you're Ron. You're I think stuff. it's yes. time to close off the recording. Uh, there's a couple people yep. I want to share this with, yeah. and now it's just getting too yeah. long. I think. Yeah, I think uh, um, Doe would so. be interested. In yeah, message. yeah. And Davina and Beth and Maureen <laughs> and maybe <laughs> Jeff and but Jeff he won't listen more than five minutes. That's it, and we've lost him. <laughs> I, I do you want me to stop the recording? There's a lot of people like that. Yeah, stop the recording.